Hi guys, it's Stephen here from James Glenn Carfields. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of the Jimmy Glenn Random Candid Car Review. Unfortunately, this week, it's not very random. No, decided to ditch the random part of uh, the channel because it was all right to begin with, but to be honest, I would like to go in with a wee bit more um, a wee bit more preparation so that I can share with you guys a bit more about the car. Um, and we'll, we also put up, we pick two cars and then we put it on Facebook and we ask you guys to vote which one you would like me to review on the Thursday. Uh, so this week it was either going to be uh, the M4 competition uh, or this car here, which has been uh, the, 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 the vehicle of choice um, for everyone on Facebook, and it is the Desenio uh, Mocha Black Mercedes E63. Now, this car comes, um, or this, uh, it's a W212, uh, and this generation of E63 came with two different engine options, and this is the turbo one. So the early one, the early cars came with the 6.2, the high revving, naturally aspirated, uh, V8 that uh, we know and love in the old shape C63. It's also um, featured in some of the Black Series cars as well. Uh, and the, the, in, this, in the E63 application, um, it makes about 525 horsepower, but it's very, very, very high up in the RPM, which is great in a sports car. I'm not entirely sure it would suit the character of uh, an E63. And, <laughs> and that's where the boosted 5.4, uh, I might actually about 5.5, I think it's 5.5, sorry, it's the, the old supercharged engine was a 5.4. So the 5.5 uh, V8 twin turbo engine in this car is something that you only need to merely suggest that you would like to go faster, and then it goes faster. The torque spread, I believe, is something along the lines of 3,000 RPM. It literally, it literally gets going from from idle, uh, which I will take it upon myself and demonstrate uh, in the video as we go through it. So I will um, take you around and let you see what the car's like. Now this car is a, is a spec monster. Not only has it got the Desenio uh, exclusive paint, wait to see the interior, and I've also got uh, I've also got some notes to help me with the spec because there is so much. So uh, let's have a look around. This is like an old friend. <laughs> We've sold this car four times. Um, and believe it or not, one of the customers is our accountant. Now that's the sort of accountant you want. Accountant that can make an E63 a sensible choice for a daily. Hi Colin, if you're watching, and a big shout out to um, AD Plus Accountants. Sorry. My bad, it's Accountants Plus. Sorry, Colin, I'll try and edit that out. <laughs> so as you may well guess, that interior is far, far, far from standard. Now this is a real, real marmite, and it's a bit of a stumbling block every time um, we've handled this car. But I just love the fact that from the, from the outside, it's total stealth, total stealth. And if you look at, if you, I don't know if we'll be able to see it uh, in the camera, but, it, there is actually a tiny, tiny, tiny element of that balsa colour in the paint. You just get the impression that when someone has spec this car new, they put a ton of time into deciding exactly what they want, what they wanted. So that's an Alcantara headlining, and that's carried on um, down to the pillars. Uh, the total Merc style, uh, big, huge. Speedo in the middle um, with the smaller rev counter to the right. It would be lovely if it was the other way around. But look at the size of the clock. The clock's enormous. So it is, um, it's aging, shall we say. But I mean, it is, uh, this, this generation of E-Class came out, oh, 2000 and, 2008, the E63 did anyway. Uh, moving on to the back, rear entertainment. You can see the double screens there as well. Uh, I meant to add, those front screens are ventilated. But guys, check this button out. Yup, we've got night vision. Night vision. But anyway, let's, while we're in here, we'll pop the bonnet. And we'll move it around. 
Um, Nathan, the last customer, bit of this nice wee cabin spoiler at the back. Um, whoa, yeah, yeah, one thing to note, guys, if you are looking to buy uh, one of these, make sure that the front discs aren't needing done. Uh, we done them the, the second last time that we sold it, and they were a thousand pounds. Just for the discs, yeah. So, just put that on your on your checklist if you're out looking for one of these. Uh, so, uh, what else have we got? So, I've got, it's got the AMG Luxury Pack, which I'm not entirely sure exactly what that entails. Probably all the Alcantara and the extended leather on the dashboard. Uh, pan roof, night vision, television. Who watches the television in the car these days? But I suppose it's handy if the kids are in the back. Um, yeah, it's also got the rather pointless but quite entertaining dynamic seats. So when you go around the right-hand corner, the left-hand bolster holds you in, a bit like a G-suit in a fighter jet. But you're not in a fighter jet, and you're not wearing a G-suit. <laughs> uh, Ventilated seat, harm camera, and it's a reverse camera. Merck, come on. It's a £90,000 car, and it didn't come with a reverse camera standard, but this one has it. So now that we quick look inside, just before we move on to the business end, uh, that is non-configurable interior lighting because bear in mind this was 2012 but gives a nice wee glow but just the quality and the fit and finish of the interior is just off the scale it really really is and I love how the the, the drive modes are all pointed towards the driver um, didn't need to do that they could have just pointed straight up towards the, the headlining but they're just tilted over uh, with the big AMG button there just meaning business shock keys traction control, and then that's for um, gearbox settings, which we'll put in manual uh, when we're out driving the car, because I've found that that is definitely the way to operate the MCT gearbox that we find in this. So it's not a torque, it's not a slushy torque converter gearbox, it's actually a, it's a dual clutch box. There it is. I always, always love how you get the, the engine builder's name on top of the I'd love to say that was made over this plastic on top of the engine, but that's so cool. Sasha Pukert. Sasha, if you're watching the video, you built a good one. We've never had any issues with this car in all the years that we've, we've handled it. So there we are, guys. Um, let's move on to what will probably be one of the best cap, one of the best cold snap videos coming right up. Okie dokie, so we have V8, 5.5, not a hot V configuration, traditional turbos on the outside, no uh, OPFs, should sound glorious, let's find out. by accident, I didn't actually mean to rev it that high, I mean, it's, it's such a huge engine, it almost spins, or it feels like it spins with very, very little inertia, like it's got a really, really small flywheel, and I'll shut up and let you hear it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, okay, let's get out now. Looking forward to this one. Damn, look at that, they broke the mold. Give me some more, make it overdose. Damn, look at that, they broke the mold. Give me some more, 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 more. Damn, look at that, they broke the mold. Give me some more, make it overdose. Damn, look at that, they broke the mold. Give me some more, 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 more. Damn, look at that, they broke the mold. Give me some more, make it overdose. I will bring till you go in this weather. Aye, no, I don't. I went at the M3, but you sold it. <laughs> Sorry, mate. See you later. Hey, guys, cheers. Anyway, where were we? Where were we? Um, <laughs> can knock off my side a bit now. Let's get to the, the, the thing, the, the, the element of this car that everybody wants to find out. Is it fast? Of course it's fast, it's absolutely ballistic. But it's not just ballistic, because you can get cars that are fast, but that's all, there's nothing else to them. We've got already the burble making its way through into the cabin. 
just as we were coming off that roundabout there. Um, we are up to temperature and we are on a nice big straight road that is a little bit damp. Paddles are really, really weighty. Got the first of the trip. Okay, I don't know we're going to be putting much traction down, much uh, power down in first bit. Let's give it a go. doing a nice job of the blips and the down change and we're now stuck at a set of traffic lights I'll be back in a sec and we are off so we've got the car in manual we've identified that today is not the day for transmitting all of that 510 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque down onto the road because it is cold it's damp so we will focus on other stuff like steering the gearbox um, further up the road, we're on a nice technical twisty road. That's where I think this car will either shine or will really, really, really start to display its weight. You know, we've got 1800 or so kilograms to, to manhandle about, and um, I think that's quite possibly might be the undoing of this car. It's not, I suppose it's not really a car for a back road glass, but. Got to see what it's like in every in every in every situation. So at the moment we're at two and a half thousand RPM in fifth gear. Okay. And the lovely thing is the way that the, the way that the throttle is mapped, you get every bit of the pedal does something. So it's not like all loaded up at the top. You know, even the last inch the throttle, you can feel it making a difference. Your box is actually really really nice not just quite as quick as you would expect um, there is a little bit of a pause between pulling the paddle and the gearbox shifting into the next call whether that's up or down we've found some gearboxes can be quick in the way down or quick in the way up but as I say it's not it's not chronic but equally it's not the best of experience Nice just to keep 
revs up that little bit higher than what you would think, which makes it a wee bit more responsive. Quick direction change in the front end is absolutely mega. Back end would be mega if you were on a track. I'm just always mindful of running out of room. Also running out of talent. It's probably one of the most surprising things so far. Brakes are good. I'd like to think so. We replaced them not long ago. Good feedback. Really, really good feedback. The steer is heavy, but it's not like it's not heavy to the point where it, it dulls the, the feedback. The bundle's going good. Try the window a wee bit. See if we can get some of that V8 awesomeness in through the cabin and onto the microphone. Feels 
the car's really, really quick. And then you need like the traction control's on. And then when the traction control goes off and it hooks up, it is absolutely off the scale ballistic. Doesn't really have an appetite for revs. You don't need, you don't need to rev it. And it makes a great noise anywhere in the rev range. Some engines only make the nice, the, the, be, the, the only really sync to their best way, way, way up the rev range, which means you don't really get to enjoy the best of the engine all of the time, whereas in this, I mean, 3,000 revs just accelerate and you hear bellowing out the back as the boost starts to build. I thought there was a car to have a hairy chest. If it had a chest, if it could grow hair, this would have the manliest, the hairiest chest of all. Probably this car home is on an autobahn. Sadly, we don't have one of those. And if you did take it out in a motorway and wanted to exercise the car's performance, you would be in jail very, very quickly. So we're left to take stuff like this on our lovely network of B roads, and it works. And it works surprisingly well. What I would do is I would set aside a, a budget for brake pads though because I think you will absolutely munch your way through a huge amount of brake pads with something like this because the way it piles on huge amounts of speed and then you've obviously got to scrub huge amounts of speed back off uh, and obviously you've got all this stuff to slow down as well um, but it's pretty satisfying and then when you're finished doing all the hooning, hooning about and you just kick back, stick it in drive, put the chalkies into soft, have the massage seats on, get the harmon on, get the kids in the back with the TV, get the sunroof cracked, and it turns into a completely, completely uh, different car. I and mean, it's like two cars for the price of one. It really is. Oh, yeah, just looking at the fuel gauge. You might need to stick some fuel away, uh, some money away, not only for brake pads, but for fuel and probably back tyres. But you will absolutely love it. <laughs> Worth every penny. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, we have got, now that I've prepared more for road tests, because we're going to drop the the, kind of the the randomness of the reviews, because I really need to spend a wee bit of time uh, researching the cars first so that I can share more with you guys. Um, and next week, we have got a Megane RS300 
the new shape one with the rear wheel steer which is going to be kindly donated to the channel um, by one of Spencer's mates so uh, I really look forward to that after that we've then got um, a, a, a Renault Clio supercharged a 197 supercharged uh, to, to review as well so yeah loads of good stuff happening loads of cool cars that hopefully I can um, convey how good or bad or how exciting or how rough or how stiff or uh, how quiet or you know how un underwhelming or how exciting they actually are once I get a chance to get them out on the road. Anyway I'm rambling on I'll see you in the next one thanks very much. Oh and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel nearly at 2000 uh, so we're getting there we're getting there okay guys I'll see you next week thanks.